Well, welcome back. The Biden administration once again gives China a break. The U.S. Treasury is postponing the ban on trades with companies linked to the Chinese military. The new restrictions now apparently will be postponed until June 11th instead of later this month, which was the date that the Trump administration had instituted. Meanwhile, other lawmakers are stepping in to push back on Beijing. Senator Marco Rubio spoke on the threat of Americans doing business in China, saying, quote, this indeed did create short-term profits and extravagant wealth for some, but in the process, it began transforming America from a country that invents and makes things into one that increasingly just finances and buys them. Joining me right now is the man himself, Florida Senator, Senate Intel Committee Vice Chairman and member of the Senate Appropriations and Foreign Relations Committees, Marco Rubio. Senator, it's always a pleasure to see you. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you. Good morning. So first, uh, the U.S. removes Jaimu, am I saying that right? Jaimu from the blacklist. The Trump administration had put this Chinese company on the blacklist. They removed that. And now they're postponing the time of a ban for trading in Chinese companies tied to the military. What's going on with the Biden administration and its policy toward China? What's going on is that there are a lot of people on Wall Street that stand to make a lot of money on investments they've made in these companies uh, or people that are doing business, companies, corporations that are doing business in China and the Chinese government is leaning on them. Uh, and, and yes, you know, the Wall Street and the financial class gave a lot more money to Democrats than Republicans in the last cycle and, and will do so again in the next cycle. And so they will lean on the White House and say, we can't do this. It's bad for our business. It's bad for America. This is good old fashioned lobbying. The difference is, of course, it's an influence lobby uh, that the Chinese have figured out how to influence our system. And this is typical of what's been going on in this country for 20 years. It didn't happen for the last four, but it's happening again, and it's bad for America. American investors and American investment funds are helping to finance and grow Chinese companies linked to the Chinese military so they can grow in their capabilities to one day defeat us in a war. So uh, do, you, do you then support the legislation or the bills coming out that basically say, look, the, for example, the trust fund should not be investing in Chinese companies tied to the military, that we should have, in fact, this ban on, on trading of Chinese companies? Yeah, there's about three or four different bills out there that deal with these different this issue in different yeah. ways. And not only do I support them, I helped write. The, I helped. I, I wrote two or three of them. And so I definitely want to see that as part of anything we do now on this China bill. This has to be dealt with. Look, people don't realize it, but the Chinese figured it out a long time ago, right? And that is, they're American corporations and American investors, and what they want to do is make a, a money. They want to make a profit, and they don't really care if long term. It doesn't matter to them if long term it's damaging for America, or maybe they do care, but they convince themselves uh, to over look at. And what happens is you now see all these dollars flowing, including the money from, from federal government retirees. The, the, basically, the equivalent of the 401k for federal employees, including members of Congress, is investing in companies that are linked to, that are owned by the, no, controlled by the Chinese military. The companies that are helping the Chinese build the weapons that are designed to defeat America in a war one day and, and kill Americans. You're absolutely right, and it's just extraordinary to me that anybody would have an idea to put military men and women's 401k into companies that are actually building the armament to overtake the United States uh, as the number one superpower, which is the stated goal. Look, Senator, you have been on this for so long, and I want you to know that the audience really appreciates your leadership on this topic. We understand the China threat. And now you have House Speaker Nancy Pelosi saying that she wants a boycott on the 2022 Beijing Olympics uh, in response to China's human rights record, but she says it's only a diplomatic boycott. She said that heads of state should not attend the Olympics, but she's fine with the American athletes competing in the games. What, what but, is that? It's okay look, for our I, I American know. athletes to go put their lives at risk, but, but the heads of state shouldn't? Yeah, look, I don't know what she meant by, by that. I don't, I, it don't make any sense to me, really. But at the end of the day, the Olympics, yeah, it, look, it's an important thing, and it could be a, a way to send a message. But in the long term, you know, whether or not the Chinese Olympics goes on with or without Americans or Western countries, it isn't going to change the fact that they're building, uh, they're building missiles that are designed to destroy our aircraft carriers. It isn't going to change the fact that we buy 80-something percent of our medicines made from China. They could cut us off and really hurt us. It doesn't change the fact that 80-something percent of the rare earth metals that we 
need for advanced technology and weaponry has to come from China because we've let them take over this industry. These are the things that are going to matter 100 years from now, 50 years from now, 10 and 5 years from now. And those are the things I want us to focus more on. Not that the other things are meaningless, but this is what matters. The balance of power in the world is being decided by the decisions that we decide to make now. And we've got a lot of people around here focused on the trivial and not willing to do what it needs to be done. And we're headed on a road of humiliation and decline if we don't deal with this. You are absolutely right. And what is the, the delay here? I mean, why is it that we are still relying on China to produce 70% of the active ingredients in our drugs? I'm talking about 70% of the active ingredients in ibuprofen, in penicillin. We're still relying on China to make those. How come that hasn't been changed? I know it doesn't well, happen overnight, but we've been talking about this now for a couple of years. Yeah, so we made changes to our tax law 20 years ago that, that incentivized these companies to leave. Look, it's cheaper to make it in China. It's cheaper. And so the most efficient outcome, the market outcome is let's make it in the cheapest place. The problem is sometimes the market outcome, and I'm as capitalist as they come, but sometimes the market outcome is not good for America or not good for Americans. And in those instances where the market outcome, as efficient as it may be, is bad for the country, we have an obligation to step in and correct it. The only way we will ever be able to produce our own rare earth minerals is if the government pro partners with the private sector to command, create the demand and the capacity. The same is true for pharmaceuticals. We have to say it is a national priority to do this and to make it happen. We're going to partner with the private sector to incentivize to make it happen. That's what Operation Warp Speed was. The market will have would have eventually given us a vaccine in three or four years. We needed it right away. And so the Trump administration stepped forward. They partnered with the private sector. And six months, seven months later, we had two vaccines and, and, a, uh, and an antiviral or uh, antibody treatment that saved, you know, Know, millions of thousands of lives. That's right. Yeah, that's right. And the Biden administration refuses to give the Trump administration any credit. I mean, how petty can you get? Look, I've got to ask the question about conflicts of interest. I have to. It's like, you see how soft Biden has been on China. Is it because there's a conflict here? Because Hunter Biden made all that money on Chinese companies. Well, you know, I don't have, like I said, I mean, it's the hard thing to prove. I can tell you at the end of the day that uh, I also believe that his administration is influenced by some of these people who come from this uh, old uh, uh, consensus that used to exist up here, that old consensus that, you know, it doesn't matter if China cheats and steals, you know, as long as we're making money. And then, look, there's people in our own party, frankly, in my own party. There's people in my party that are very fundamentalists yep. when it comes to the economy. And their view is, look, if it's good for the economy, if it's good for the stock market, if it's good for investors, that's something we should be for. And generally, yeah, we should, except if the if bad for America or bad for Americans. And I think those people have a lot of influence yeah. in American politics. They put a lot of money in super PACs, a lot of money in campaigns, and we have to stop pretending that because someone is the CEO of a major corporation, they are somehow yeah. speaking on behalf of the American people or the American economy. They're speaking on behalf of their company and their short-term interests most of the time. It is it? Uh, you're right. And those people's children and their children will not have the same opportunities that they had growing up if, in fact, we're living in a China empire. That's for sure. And that brings me to all of these UFO sightings. Uh, I, you, we've talked about uh, this a uh, fair amount at this point. And the last time we spoke, we talked about Congress being briefed on UFOs next month uh, and, and whether or not what you're seeing in the air is some kind of technology from an adversary like China. I spoke with the former director of intelligence, John Ratcliffe, back in March on this topic. Here's what Radcliffe told me. Listen to this. Have unidentified flying objects been seen? Well, sure. We, we have uh, lots of reports about what we call uh, unidentified aerial phenomena. There are a lot more sightings than have been made public. Sometimes we wonder whether or not our adversaries have technologies um, that are a little bit further down the road than we thought or that we realized. Senator, is that what it is? It, what do you think this is, these phenomenon that you're seeing? I don't know. We don't know, and that's the problem. And, and let me be clear, I haven't seen anything. I'm going off what our military men and their radars and their eyesight is telling them. And there's multiple highly trained, highly competent people. There's stuff flying in our airspace. We don't know what it is. We need to find out. That's my position on it. Will you find out in, in June with the FBI report? I, I think we'll find out more. Uh, I'm not sure they'll have all the answers. I hope they do. Maybe there's a simple explanation for all this. But, uh, but I think at least we're starting to answer the question. For years, no one was even answering the question because of the stigma about little green men.
Yes, you're right. Thanks for bringing up the topic. A UFO is sighted every day for the last two years, we're being told. Senator Marco Rubio, always a pleasure, sir. Thank you, sir. We'll be right back.